Jesus Christ has paid us into the kingdom. Amen. She was Christ as we are saved to our kingdom. Please for his God and
My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, Graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido y me ha enviado para anunciar la buena nueva a los pobres. 
a curar a los de corazón quebrantado, a proclamar el perdón a los cautivos, la libertad a los prisioneros y a pregonar el año de gracia del Señor, el día de la venganza de nuestro Dios. El Señor me ha enviado a consolar a los afligidos, los afligidos de Sion, a cambiar su ceniza en diadema, sus lágrimas en aceite perfumado de alegría y su abatimiento en cánticos. Ustedes serán llamados sacerdotes del Señor, ministros de nuestro Dios se les llamará. Esto dice el Señor, yo les daré su recompensa fielmente y haré con ellos un pacto perpetuo. Su estirpe será célebre entre las naciones y sus vástagos entre los pueblos. Cuanto los vean, reconocerán que son la estirpe que bendijo el Señor. Palabra de Dios. A reading from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins with his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God the one who is, who was, and who is to come, 
the Almighty. The Word of the Lord. sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Praise and honor to your Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read what was handed, a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind and to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. En el cual tiempo Jesús fue a Nazaret, donde se había criado. Entró en la sinagoga como era su costumbre hacerlo los sábados. Y se levantó para hacer la lectura. Se le dio el volumen del profeta Isaías, lo desarrolló y encontró el pasaje en que estaba escrito. El Espíritu del Señor está sobre mí, porque me ha ungido para llevar a los pobres la buena nueva para anunciar la revelación a los captivos y la curación a los ciegos, para dar libertad a los oprimidos y para calmar el año de gracia del Señor. Enrolló el volumen, lo devolvió al encongado y se sentó. 
Los ojos de todos los asentetas a la sinagoga estaban fijos en él. Entonces comenzó a hablar diciendo, Hoy mismo se ha cumplido este pasaje de la escultura que acaban de oír. The Gospel of the Lord. Each year, we gather during this Holy Week to renew our promises as priests, to be faithful to the mission entrusted to us by Jesus Christ. It is the same Spirit that fell upon Jesus, that fell upon us, in our baptism, making all of us priests, prophets, and kings, all of us daughters and sons of the Father that gave to us an intimate relationship within the heart of the Trinity. As ministerial priests, we too were consecrated on the day of our ordination with the same spirit of Jesus Christ. We are told that we are configured to Christ and that we act in the person of Christ the head, the shepherd, and the bridegroom of the church. It is a ministry that must be taken on with complete humility, complete surrender to the Lord, to seek the Father and the will of the Father as Jesus did. And in that, the church has called all the faithful to holiness. There is a universal call to be holy as our God is holy. And the Second Vatican Council reminds us in Lumen Gentium in chapter 5 of that call to holiness. To be perfect as your Father is perfect. And the only way that that can come about is if we truly surrender ourselves to the Lord. And that is true for every Christian. It is, in the words of the Council, a gift from Christ. We must follow in his footsteps and conform ourselves to his image, seeking the will of the Father in all things. We must devote ourselves with all our being to the glory of God and the service of our neighbor. And my brothers and sisters, 
The sacraments help us to grow in holiness. They help us to grow in the virtue of charity. Jesus in the Gospels has given us the command, love one another as I have loved you. You will live in my love if you are faithful to the commandments as I was faithful to the commandments. And it is not that we become moralists, but rather that we allow Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the Father to form our hearts and minds. And some of you may say, well, it's impossible for us to be perfect. And yes, if you believe in the world, that is true. But if you believe in Jesus Christ, it is he who makes you perfect. It is your constant surrender to him. Your letting go of human ideas and putting on the heart and mind of Jesus Christ. It means, in the words of the Council, that we are to be moved by the Spirit of God and obey the voice of the Father and worship God the Father in spirit and truth. And my brothers and sisters, that is what we do every time we come to the Eucharist. We are in the midst of the Eucharistic revival, and we must ponder in our hearts, do we truly see the celebration of the Eucharist, and especially for us as priests, do we see the celebration of the Eucharist as the Second Vatican Council taught and saw the Eucharist. The Council reminded us of how Christ is present in the Eucharist. He is present in the sacrifice of the Mass, not only in the person of his minister, you, my brother, priest, and they go on to say, the same now offering through the ministry of priests who formerly offered himself on the cross, but especially under the Eucharistic species. And my beloved brothers, my sons, do we really see ourselves as being in the person of Christ the head and shepherd. As in the words of the council, the same now offering through the ministry of priests who formerly offered himself on the cross. All of us are unworthy And I know in my heart of hearts, I am the most unworthy before the Father, before Jesus, before the Holy Spirit. And it is not beating myself up, but it is letting God be God. and letting God save me rather than thinking I have to save myself. That God is faithful to his promises and that he will accomplish in us what he says he wants to accomplish. And we are reminded too 
that Christ is present in his word as we listen to his word and he is present in the community as we gather. Why? Because we are joined with our head. If we are not joined with Jesus Christ, The body has no meaning. It is only when we are joined with Christ, and most especially in the Eucharist itself, that our God still humbles himself in every Mass that is celebrated that he truly makes himself present. Not only in the ministry of priests, not only in his word or in the gathering of the assembly, but in the Eucharist itself. That is where he is most humble. that every time you and I receive the Eucharist, it is the second person of the Trinity who we receive. And when we enter into the celebration of the Mass, listen to the words of the Council, ponder them in your hearts. Christ indeed always associates the Church with himself, in this great work wherein God is perfectly glorified and people are sanctified. The church is his beloved bride who calls to her Lord and through him offers worship to the Father. As we prepare as priests, for the celebration of the Mass, as we prepare as the faithful for celebration of the Mass, do we see ourselves gathering to worship the Eternal Father in spirit and in truth? Or do we approach it more like a football game? or a basketball game, or as March Madness. How do we approach the Eucharist? And we are invited, and it should fill our hearts with wonder, with awe, with joy, with peace, because we are invited into that one sacrifice, that eternal love of the Father for us. The council goes on. In the earthly liturgy, we take part in a foretaste of that heavenly liturgy, which is celebrated in the holy city of Jerusalem toward which we journey as pilgrims, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father, a minister of the holies and of the tabernacle. And we sing with all those in heaven as we eagerly await our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ, when he shall appear in glory. If we ponder those words in our hearts and take them seriously, and if we believe in them and put our faith in what the Lord desires for us, 
the world would be transformed. People would hunger and long for the Eucharist. And that is what the revival is trying to accomplish. And how do we turn to the Eucharist and allow the Lord to heal us, to forgive us, to reconcile us, to order us, so that we seek only the will of the Father. And in all of the various parts of the Mass, when you look at them, whether it is the penitential rite, the readings, the offertory, the Eucharist itself, the Our Father, the sign of peace, the reception of the Eucharist, all of those movements are for our healing and reconciliation. To increase our trust in Jesus Christ, to increase our love for the Father, Jesus, and the Spirit, so that we may go out into the world and love the homeless, love those on the peripheries, love those in prison, love those who are sick, And it nurtures that gift of charity within us. Because we share in the charity of Christ in every Eucharist. And the Lord continues, and it's important for us to recognize, as they did in the early church, the importance of interceding for others and praying for others. In Paul's letter to the Romans, in 1 John 2, and in the letter to the Hebrews, they all speak of Jesus interceding for us that he sits at the right hand of the Father and prays for us. My brothers, do we truly believe that Jesus prays for me personally, intercedes for me personally? And to you, the faithful, my brothers and sisters, do you see Jesus as being your biggest cheerleader? As the one who desires nothing more for you than for you to experience the love of the Eternal Father. That he prays for you at every Mass. that you will be more fully united with him. And always remember that his first word from the cross was a prayer of intercession for the world and for every human being. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. His first word is mercy. His first word is forgiveness. Not to remain in your sin, but to experience that forgiveness that will set you free. And do we approach the Eucharist in that way? Or do we cling to the belief and the lie, and it is a lie put there by the devil, 
I can never become holy as God is holy. It is just the way that I am. That is a lie. It makes yourself God and does not allow God to be God. And that is the good news that we are called to proclaim. That is the good news that we are called to open our hearts to. My beloved brothers, I am deeply grateful to each and every one of you for your ministry as priests. And I pray that your heart and your will may be ever more conformed to Jesus Christ. I encourage you, intercede for one another as Christ intercedes for you. And especially intercede and pray prayers of reparation for your brother priests, for brother bishops, who have strayed, who have damaged the church and the body of Christ. How often do we offer masses of reparation for the sins of the world? For all the false gods and idols that people have taken hold of? Or are we more of the world that just laments, complains, or thinks that we have to solve it on our own, rather than going to the only one who can take care of it? And that is the beauty of the prayer of surrender that I have shared with you so many times. of letting Jesus take care of it. And I take on the humility of the tax collector who goes before the Lord and pray, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Trusting in his mercy. And so as we renew our promises today, I encourage you, my dearest brothers, to ponder the words of the Council, to reflect on the meaning of the Mass, how you prepare for the celebration of the Eucharist, the call to holiness that is given to all of us. And to you, my sisters and brothers, ponder your baptism and who you became in baptism. What does it mean for you to be a beloved son, a beloved daughter of the Father, and to live in that intimacy and friendship with the Lord? And I pray, my brothers, that we too may be strengthened by the spirit that we received so that the words of Isaiah spoken centuries ago, the words of Isaiah spoken by Jesus may be fulfilled in each one of us. At this Chrism Mass in 2024, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord, to comfort all who mourn, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, 
a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. May those words, my beloved brothers and sons, be fulfilled in each one of us. My beloved sons, on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the head and shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. As for you, my dearest sons and daughters, pray for your priests, that the Lord may pour out his gifts abundantly upon them and keep them as faithful ministers of Christ, the high priest, so that they may lead you to him who is the source of salvation. And pray also for me, that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness, and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ, the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal, Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we may humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, my brother Jorge, my assistant bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, 
Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with his eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim, in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us pardon through Christ our Lord. O oh God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith. Send forth from the heavens, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body so that by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain and infirmity and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord, Jesus Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
We beseech you, Almighty God, that those you renew by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. O oh God, strength and protection of your people who have graciously made the oil you created a sign of strength. Graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ they may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church through Christ our Lord. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God, the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil so that all who are outwardly anointed with it may be transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage that the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch foreshadowing the gift to come. In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed to the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil causes our faces to be joyful and serene. You also commanded your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed 
that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten Son. And you were seen to confirm clearly what the prophet David had foretold in song, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit with the powerful working of your Christ. From his holy name, it has received the name of chrism, and with it you have anointed your priests, prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you confirm the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those to be made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. May those formed into a temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation for those born again of water and the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers of heavenly glory through Christ our Lord. Last night, Father Angel contacted me to say that he was sick, and he asked if I would uh, do the jubilarian honoring, uh, and I agreed to do so on one condition, that Father Ryan O'Neill would be allowed to do the color commentary while I gave this. <laughs> so we had that all set up, and then right before Mass, uh, Archbishop vetoed that. So uh, I'm going to ask each of the jubilarians to stand as, uh, as I present about them. So we'll begin with the, those celebrating 50 years in the priesthood uh, with Father William Breslin. Father Breslin was born in Red Bank, New Jersey on February 27, 1948. He was ordained a priest on May 18, 1974 for the Diocese of Trenton, New Jersey. He earned a B.A. from St. Mary, Mary's Seminary College in Cantonsville, Maryland, and also an STM from St. Mary's Seminary and University in Baltimore, Maryland. While in New Jersey, he served as associate pastor of St. Mary's Church and chaplain at St. Mary's High School in South Amboy. Father Breslin moved to Denver in the summer of 1977 to be closer to his family. His first assignments were as assistant pastor of St. Mary Magdalene Parish in Denver and part-time chaplain of Central Catholic High School in Denver. Father Breslin, Father Breslin was incarnated on August 11, 1978. As pastor, he served at Immaculate Heart of Mary in North Glen, Queen of Peace in Aurora for 14 years, and two terms at Sacred Heart of Jesus in Boulder, and St. Rita in Netherland. Father also served as Dean of the Boulder Deanery and Chaplain of the Boulder Sarah Club. He was granted medical retirement on June 18, 2023, and currently serves as a confessor for the seminarians of Redemptoris Mater Seminary and chaplain for the faculty and staff of St. John Bianni Seminary. Please join me in thanking Father Bill for his many years of service and dedication to the Archdiocese of Denver. Applause. 
also celebrating 50 years, Father Thomas Coit. Father Coit was born in Fort Collins, Colorado on September 28, 1948. He was ordained a priest on May 25, 1974 at the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. He earned an MA at St. Thomas Seminary in Denver and a teaching certificate from the University of Denver. He studied American Sign Language at Gal Gallaudet College in Washington, D.C. and the University of Arizona. His first assignment after ordination was as, was as part-time assistant pastor at St. Philomena Parish in Denver and part-time coordinator of the Ministry to the Deaf. He served as assistant pastor of St. Mary Magdalene in Denver and St. Joseph in Fort Collins. Father Coit became pastor of St. Joseph in Fort Collins in 1985. He served four terms at Holy Cross in Thornton and one term at St. Bernadette in Lakewood. Father Coit began full-time ministry to the deaf in 1977. He also served as chaplain to the Denver Metropolitan Scouting Program and Dean of the Central West Deanery. He was granted retirement on June 30th, 2020. Please join me in congratulating Father Tom for his many years of service and dedication to the Archdiocese of Denver and to the deaf community. Also celebrating 50 years, Father James Fox. Father Fox was born in Rapid City, South Dakota on January 8, 1948. He was ordained a priest of Denver on December 14, 1974 at All Saints Church in Denver. He studied at St. Thomas Seminary College and earned a BA at St. Thomas Seminary Graduate School. He served as assistant pastor of Divine Redeemer in Colorado Springs, pastor of St. Mary in Rifle, St. John the Baptist in Longmont, St. Michael the Archangel in Aurora, and has been pastor at Good Shepherd in Denver since 2010. In addition, Father Fox has served on the Archdiocesan College of Consultors, Dean of the Glenwood Springs Deanery, the Aurora Deanery, the East Denver Deanery, and Central East De Denver Deanery. He was the chaplain for the Catholic Youth Services and Pace Alternative High Schools. Please join me in congratulating Father Jim for his years of service and dedica dedicated service in the Archdiocese of Denver. Also celebrating 50 years, Monsignor Bernard Schmidt. Monsignor Bernie was born in Denver, Colorado on June 22, 1948. He was ordained a priest on May 25, 1974 at the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. He earned a BA in philosophy and an MA in theology at St. Thomas Seminary in Denver. He served as assistant pastor at St. John the Baptist in Longmont Holy Apostles in Colorado Springs, and St. Mary in Colorado Springs. Monsignor served as pastor of Our Lady Mother of the Church in Commerce City, St. Michael the Archangel in Aurora, Our Lady of Peace in Greeley, Mother of God in Denver, the Cathedral Basilica of the Immaculate Conception, St. Joseph Parish in Denver, and La Parroquia del Espiritu Santo in Monterrey, Monteria, Colombia as a member of the Archdiocesan Mission Team in Monteria. Monsignor Bernie has served as Dean of the Aurora and Greeley Deaneries, Assistant Vocation Director, and Delegate Liaison for Clergy. He served as Vicar for Clergy for 10 years. He served as Chaplain of the Knights of Columbus in Commerce City. Monsignor was appointed Chaplain to His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI, on July 7, 2009. He was granted retirement on June 18, 2019. 
Monsignor Bernie currently serves as spiritual director for the propedeutic year at St. John Vianney Seminary. Please join me in congratulating Monsignor Bernie for his many years of dedicated service in the Archdiocese of Denver. Celebrating 40 years in the priesthood, Father Simon Kalonga. Father Kalonga was born in Kamiji in the Lomami province of the Democratic Republic of the Congo on September 11, 1955. He was ordained a priest on June 30, 1984. He studied philosophy and theology at the major seminary of Kananga, Father Kalanga came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 1995. He was incarnated on July 9, 2013. He served as part-time parochial vicar at St. Louis Parish in Inglewood. As a pastor, he served at Cure de Ars for 14 years and has been pastor of St. Joseph and Holy Family Parishes in Fort Collins since 2017. Father Simone also served as chaplain to the Descalce Carmelite Sisters in Littleton and was a member of the Presbyteral Council. He currently serves as Dean of the Fort Collins Deanery. Please join me in congratulating Father Simone for his many years of service and dedication to the Archdiocese of Denver. Father Felician Umbala. Father Umbala was born in Nagandajika in Lomami province of the Democratic Republic of the Congo on January 1st, 1958. He was ordained a priest on June 30th, 1984. He earned a master's in pastoral and catechesis from the International Institute of Catechesis and Pastoral Studies in Brussels, Belgium a master's and PhD in dogmatic theology from the Catholic University of Louvain, also in Belgium. Father Umbala came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 2005. He was incarnated on April 2, 2014. He served as parochial vicar at St. John the Evangelist in Loveland, Our Lady of Loretto in Foxfield, St. Michael the Archangel in Aurora, St. Thomas Aquinas in Boulder, St. Mary in Breckenridge, and Our Lady of Peace in Silverthorne. Father Mbala currently serves as pastor of St. John the Evangelist in Yuma and St. Andrew in Ray. Please join me in congratulating Father Felician for his years of dedication and service to the Archdiocese of Denver. Celebrating 25 years in the priesthood, Father Charles Anedo. Father Anedo was born in Anambra State, Nigeria, on November 3, 1968. He was ordained a priest on March 19, 1999, for the Archdiocese of Oincha, Nigeria. He earned a BPhil and B Bachelor's in Theology from the Seat of Wisdom Seminary in Oweri, Nigeria. Father Anedo came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 2006 and began his clinical pastoral education residency at St. Anthony Central Hospital in Denver. He became a, he became a full-time priest chaplain at St. Anthony's in February of 2007. Father Anedo became certified by the National Association of Catholic Chaplains in 2010. He currently provides mission and ministry for St. Anthony Central, now located in Lakewood. Please join me in congratulating Father Charles for his years of service and dedication to the Archdiocese of Denver and St. Anthony Hospital. Also celebrating 25 years, Father Gerardo 
Garcia Jimenez. Father Garcia Jimenez was born in Guadalajara, Mex Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico on June 20th, 1971. He was ordained a priest on May 23rd, 1999 for the Archdiocese of Guadalajara. He earned a, a license uh, at, in, in philosophy at the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome. Father Gerardo came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 2015. He was incarnated on July 11th, 2020. He served as parochial vicar at St. Augustine in Brighton and St. John the Baptist in Longmont. He, he has served at St. Mary's in Rifle and Sacred Heart in Silk for seven years, first as administrator, then pastor. Please join me in congratulating Father Gerardo for his years of service and dedication to the Archdiocese of Denver. Also celebrating 25 years, Father Jason Tiroff. Father Tiroff was born in Iowa City, Iowa on March 20th, 1971. He was ordained a priest on June 5th, 1999 for the Diocese of Tucson. He earned a BA from the Franciscan University of Steubenville, an MA and MDiv from St. John's Seminary in Camarillo, California. Father Jason came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 2003 and was incarnated on August 15, 2008. He served as parochial vicar at St. John the Evangelist in Loveland and St. Stephen in Glenwood Springs. He served as administrator, then pastor, of St. Helena in Fort Morgan, St. Francis of Assisi in Weldona, and St. Peter and Paul in Wheat Ridge. He currently serves as pastor of St. Jude in Lakewood. Father Jason served as Dean of the Eastern Plains Deanery and as a member of the Continuing Education for Priests Committee. Please join me in congratulating Father Jason for his many years of service and dedication to the Archdiocese of Denver. <laughs> Father Carl Millis. Father Millis was born on July 26, 1964. He was ordained a priest on June 24, 1999 for the Diocese of Cheyenne. He also served for eight years in the Diocese of Lincoln, Nebraska. Father Millis came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 2022 and is currently a, in ministry with the Society of the Most Sorrowful Mother in Keensburg, Colorado. Please join me in congrat congratulating Father Carl for his 25 years of service and dedication to the priesthood. <laughs> also celebrating 25 years, Father Gabriel Okafor. Father Okafor was born on July 6, 1966 in Aguleri, Nigeria. He was ordained a priest on December 4th, 1999 for the Archdiocese of Oincha, Nigeria. He earned a bachelor's in philosophy and in theology from St. Joseph Major Seminary. Father Okafor served as an associate pastor and pastor for several parishes in Nigeria. Father Okafor came to the Archdiocese of Denver in 2007 to complete his clinical pastoral education program at Littleton Adventist Hospital. He served as priest chaplain for St. Anthony Central and is currently serving as priest chaplain at Exempla St. Joseph Hospital in Denver. Father Gabriel had the honor of receiving the St. Josephine Baquita St. Catherine Drexel Award from the Office of Black Catholic Ministry on November 20, 2015 for outstanding service to the pastoral needs of the black African and African American community within the Archdiocese of Denver. Please join me in congratulating Father Gabriel for his years of service to the hospitals and the Archdiocese of Denver. <laughs> and
and three priests who, uh, who are not able to be with us. We have two members of the Society of Jesus who are celebrating 40 years, Father Thomas Coran and Gerard Menard, and one priest of the Archdiocese of Denver celebrating 25 years, Father James Michael Phelan. Let us rise. The Lord be with you. And blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in and out the gospel of the Thanks be to God.